Cybersecurity experts have referred to APT41's activities as one of the broadest campaigns by Chinese cyber espionage actors in recent years. The Chinese defendants targeted well over 100 victims worldwide in a variety of industries and sectors that are sadly part of the standard target list for Chinese hackers. So do you have a sense of the extradition uh, timing in terms of... These cyber attacks start here. Since 2003, China has maintained an exponential growth in its economy. Its objective is to completely displace the United States and position itself as the world superpower. Its government is focusing its resources into cyber warfare and military equipment. Xi Jinping, the president of the political party that has governed since 1949, is the one in charge of approving and executing all of these socioeconomic and political strategies. In order to maintain its growth, the government surpasses global barriers by spying and stealing information from countries, companies, and even violating the rights of its population in order to maintain its stability and growth. If you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. If you know yourself, but not the enemy, for every victory gained, you will also suffer a defeat. If you know neither the enemy nor yourself, you will succumb in every battle. Sun Tzu, The Art of War The Chinese cyber army has started a cyber war and it's capable of destroying its economic and military enemies, as well as the weaker nations it seeks to control. Every five years, the Chinese government evaluates and updates its growth and development plans. The 14 plan made in China 2025 focuses on a strategic roadmap for an upgrade to Chinese industry from low-quality and low-value products to production of high-tech goods in categories including pharmaceutical, automotive, aerospace, semiconductor, IT, and robotics. To achieve the goals in this plan, it is currently executing aggressive, targeted cyber espionage campaigns aimed at dozens of public and private sector organizations and countries in pursuit of intellectual property, trade secrets, and technological advancements in artificial intelligence to gain market and military advantages. Likewise, executing offensive cyber attacks using new malware such as Golden Spy, MTBot malware, and Tador, digital suppression of foreign and domestic cultural, political, and religious views that counter the government. Its state-sponsored threat actors are stealing personal information of millions from social media, dating apps, phones, banks, hospitals, and tax departments. They have been known to use this information to blackmail people holding important government positions in exchange for confidential information and government plans. This year, the dispute between China and India was reignited over the border territory. The Indian Cyber Police reported more than 40,000 cyber attacks originating from Chengdu, China. These attacks included phishing attacks, DOS, and malware. To counterattack, the Indian government banned about 200 Chinese applications, including TikTok, WeChat, PUBG, and Hilo, claiming that user data is forwarded to Chinese servers without authorization. Other victims of China's cyber attacks have been Australia and the United States, which have been continuously cyber invaded by China. In June 2020, there was a significant increase 
in cyber attacks, for which government officials issued warnings to industries and government entities of sophisticated Xi Jinping government-sponsored cyber attacks in Asia and Africa, universities, aerospace, banking, pharmaceutical, engineering, construction, defense industries, and user personal information are more prone to cyber espionage. Xi Jinping is interested in spying on Middle East, Europe, and Southeast Asia. Since the United States has great influence and relationship with these countries, this is a way for China to get commercial confidential information belonging to the United States and at the same time to gain commercial territory through political agreements, gaining more influence and power that can be used by the government for its communist expansion. It is known that the Beijing government monitors more than 33 countries and countless private sector industries. The teams that perform these operations are the Chinese cyber military units, identified as APT groups or advanced persistent threat groups, and their mission is to spy on the target countries and industries for years. These groups are helping it to become a superpower and taking control over the world via stealing intellectual property and trade secrets. The most famous APT groups of the Chinese government are APT-41, Winti Group. APT-41 has directly targeted organizations in at least 14 countries. Its targets are industries within the healthcare, aerospace, telecommunications, education, transportation, and high-tech sectors. It is similar to APT-18 or WECB, which also specializes in spying on many of these industries. APT-41 penetrates technology companies and implants malicious codes in their softwares, so all the clients of those companies are infected with malware. This was the case of NetSarang, a remote business administration tool used by many companies around the world. With this tool, 600,000 devices were infected. Another case was CCleaner, which also had malicious code implanted that compromised around 2.3 million computers. In 2019, the computer company ASUS also found malicious software on its devices. Malicious code was also implanted into video games, such as Path of Exile, League of Legends, and FIFA Online 3. Through all these cyber attacks, they affected millions of users around the world to spy on them for years. APT-40 APT-40 strategically targets important countries of the Belt and Road Initiative, as well as countries in Europe. This group also helps Beijing modernize its naval forces, spying research projects in universities for obtaining designs for marine equipment and vehicles. APT-30 targets countries of members of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. This group has had the cyber arms to infect air gap networks to take complete control of devices not connected to the Internet. APT-19 Kodasa Team APT-19 targets companies in the legal and investment sector in order to have evidence against important people and be able to blackmail them in the future. This group is made up of freelance workers with sponsorships from the Xi Jinping government. APT-17 Tailgater Deputy Doc APT-17 targets the U.S. government, international law firms, and information technology companies. This group has also attacked laboratories and pharmaceutical companies to steal the COVID vaccine formula.
APT-16 APT-16 targets Japanese and Taiwanese organizations in the high-tech, government services, media, and financial services industries. It also interferes in political and journalistic affairs. APT-12 APT-12 targets journalists and news companies in order to spy on them and spread fake news. APT-10 Menu Pass Team APT-10 targets construction, engineering, aerospace, telecom firms, and governments in the United States, Europe, and Japan. APT-3 UPS Team APT-3 targets aerospace, defense, construction, and engineering, high-tech, telecommunications, and transportation industries. APT-1 Unit 61398 Common Crew APT-1 consists of the People's Liberation Army General Staff Department, which is most commonly known by its military unit cover designator. APT-1 has systematically stolen hundreds of terabytes of data from at least 141 organizations worldwide. These groups have also assisted the government in disinformation campaigns to spread fake news for disrupting democracy in different countries. During the pandemic, these groups were responsible for spreading false news related to COVID and scamming millions of people. Twitter reported that there were thousands of accounts belonging to the Beijing government, even though this social network is banned in this country. The same happened with YouTube, where Google blocked 2,500 channels that were used to create conflicts between black and whites, even though YouTube is banned in China. With these tactics, the Xi Jinping government dishonors the countries that have rights and freedom. The APT groups have thousands of malware and spy tools. These tools allow them to hide and stay in your devices for years. It doesn't matter if the victim restores their device to the factory settings or disconnects from the internet. They will remain there monitoring. This is why these tools are known as cyber weapons. To maintain its balance and protect itself, the Xi Jinping government imposes many limitations on its population, mainly onto minorities that are not aligned with the idealism of the government and are considered a danger to society. These minorities are called the Five Poisons, and they include Tibetan communities, Falun Gong, Uyghurs, members of the democratic movement and the Taiwan independence movement. In recent years, the Chinese government has reportedly detained more than a million Uyghurs in its re-education camps. A similar situation occurred with Catholics and citizens of Hong Kong. To attract minority groups on a large scale in late 2019, cyber criminals targeted telecom providers from Turkey. Kazakhstan, India, Thailand, and Malaysia. If you want to know more about this, our video link is now appearing on the top. The communist government also implemented a national surveillance system that is linked to its social credit system, which guarantees the obedience and compliance of citizens with the law. They have a point system that evaluates more than 1,400 million people and companies. And by this year, China will have 626 million surveillance cameras. People with the best points can travel, have access to loans or to the health system. On the other hand, if they are identified by facial recognition in protests or doing something they should not, their points are taken away. Because of this, The protesters tend to use masks to protect themselves from the facial recognition of the cameras. The modern war tactic of the Xi Jinping government is to export its technology around the world, which has hidden backdoors. 
This provides the ability of superior surveillance and of collecting data from all users. One of these methods is through 5G technology, Huawei devices, or applications like TikTok, WeTransfer, PUBG, and thousands more. These types of devices or applications could help take control of devices remotely and one day turn off electrical grids or cut off adversaries' access to communication networks. With these tactics and their cyber army, Xi Jinping's government has found ways to infiltrate places that it could have never reached on its own, and it is gaining more and more control globally. China's goal is to be the world superpower and impose its own ideology, no matter what it costs. This is visible from its cyber warfare tactics, which it has already started. It is well known that different nations spy on each other. Some of these nations are the United States, Russia, Germany, England, New Zealand, Canada, and Australia, among others. Similarly, Google and Facebook have already taken control of our privacy. But despite this, we continue to live in a world of democracy, with human rights, freedom of speech, and the press. Communist China, however, has taken espionage to the extreme limit of wanting to gain full control of the whole world. If Xi Jinping wins this cyber war, we will have no freedom of speech or human rights, and we will be living under surveillance 24-7. Definitely, an imperfect democracy is always better than not having one at all. Please like and share this video.